strong. When we come together, then as one, we are not strong. We got to repair the doors and keep stuff out. Get out what has already come in and restore things to the way they once were. Chapter 30, verse 17. And listen, I said a minute ago, probably more than a minute ago, but anyway. Why am I saying all this here? Why is this being preached here? First, because we need to be on the watch and be careful. And second, because we may have some dust on our furniture. We need to examine ourselves and clean all that out. We need to close the door so that nothing is coming in. But more importantly, once we get it, we need to go out there. There are brothers and sisters out there who are being deceived. There are people out there who are truly wanting to worship God and serve God who are being deceived because they ended up in the place where the filth of the world has come in and they've been deceived by it. They are part of us. We are all the family of God. If they have been born again, they should matter to us. Here in chapter 30, verse 17, there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. There are many in the church who are not sanctified, but they are a part of our congregation. Listen to what he said here. There were many in the congregation who were not sanctified. So they said, well, that's their fault. That's their problem. They're going to have to deal with that. They're going to stand before God one day, which is what a lot of the church would say. But that's not what they did. There were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore, the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passover for every one that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. Because there were many who were not sanctified, the Levites, the ones who were sanctified, took it upon themselves to go before God for them, to make that, that, that sacrifice, to cry out to God, to burn that incense on their behalf, that God would clean them too, that God would make a difference in their life too. They didn't just say, well, that's their problem. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Isaac, and Zebulon, had not cleansed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. As again, as I said, listen, there are a lot of people who have truly accepted God, who have been deceived, and they're being told wrong, and they're trying to serve God, but they're doing it wrong. Listen, these people were not sanctified, and they were eating the Passover otherwise than it was written. They were doing it wrong. They really wanted to serve God, but they hadn't been sanctified. The, the pollution that had come in had deceived them. But listen, what happens? But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, The good Lord pardon every one that prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. They were part of the congregation, but they hadn't been sanctified. They didn't get it. They didn't understand. They didn't clean themselves up, set themselves apart. They, they had a heart for God. You can hear it in here, what he said. He said, pardon everyone who prepared their heart to seek the Lord. They were trying. They were just doing it wrong because they didn't know right. And there's many out there like that. But Hezekiah didn't say, well, they'll have to deal with God or they'll have to stand in judgment one day or I can't do nothing for them. I can't go over and tell them. I can't interfere with them. They're a different denomination or they don't like us. They think we're a cult or whatever. Hezekiah didn't say that. He cried out to God on their behalf. That's what we need to do. And it goes right along with what I've been saying. We need to get a burden. We need to care. When they did care, when they sanctified themselves and cleaned themselves up, then they could look and see that their brothers, that a part of their congregation, needed that too. And they began to cry out to God for them. They didn't cry out to God, give me more. They didn't cry out to God, make me more comfortable. They didn't cry out to God, let me shout, let me run, let me be happy. They cried out to God on behalf of them. That's what we need to do. The church uh, and the people in the church have become so self-centered and so focused on their self and so worried about them, 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 their own self that they have forgotten that they got brothers and sisters out there who need 
some help. But once these people got sanctified, once they got cleaned up, what was their thought? Part of the congregation didn't get it. We need to go to God for them. And that's what we need to do. There needs to be a revival in the church. Amen. A real revival, a restoration, a coming back to God, a coming back to the book, a coming back to the way that God set it up. But I'm going to tell you something. It ain't going to just magically happen. Somebody has to begin to seek God. Somebody has to get a heart for it. Somebody has to get a burden for it. Somebody has to be the kind of a vessel that is clean, that is pure, that is sanctified, that is set apart, that can touch God. That's the only way it's going to happen. You'll hear all other kinds of things about the great revival that's coming and all this stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. There's only one way that revival comes. It's when hearts ache for it. It's when hearts long for it. It's when hearts desire it. It's when it becomes something that you want so bad, nothing else matters. Everything else is second place. And that's your heart. And you can't sleep because you want it. And you can't eat because you want it. And your heart is breaking to see the church come back to Christ. And that's when revival will come. When people begin to cry out with that kind of a heart, I will guarantee you on the authority of God's word, he will move. We don't even know what revival is. It's not a week on the calendar. It's not calling in a fancy preacher. It's not anything like that. It's a restoration. A restoration. What is a restoration? You ever see an old building that's fallen down, all dilapidated and tore apart, and that building is brought back to what it once was? The church needs to be brought back Amen. to what it once was. On, that's revival. That's restoration. That's what we need. We have been so deceived. We have so fooled ourselves. We have allowed ourselves to be fooled. So we come to begin to believe that if we can get somebody that can holler loud enough and jump high enough and get me all excited and get me goosebumps, then we've had revival. And then we go on. And Satan laughs. Because we've allowed ourselves to believe that's revival. That is not revival. And again, I know I said this often, but I want to make it very clear. There's nothing wrong with having a week of meeting, two weeks of meeting, a month of meeting. You can't get too much. But don't call it revival when it ain't revival. And you don't get revival. Because the pastor calls up one of his buddies and has him come up for a week and holler at you. You get revival when you cry out to God for revival. Amen. From your heart, not from your brain. From your heart. And unless the church gets to that point where they're really broken and they're really crying out and they really <laughs> desire to see a restoration, it ain't going to happen. <clears throat> this, this is what's got to happen. If this don't happen, you know, I've said here a, a few times lately that if something don't happen here, this church is going to die. Well, if something don't happen in this country, the church is already dead. Amen. Sure. There's got to be a restoration. There's got to be a, a rejuvenation. There's got to be a, a restoration of the church. We need to understand that. We need to get that. Because we call it church, and because we say we're Christians, doesn't mean we're meeting the definition that's in here. And this is what we've got to line up with. This is what we've got to adhere to. You, a lot of people think 
I'm just some old fogey and some old fashioned thing and, and don't want any of the new modern stuff in and this and that and fine, they can think what they want. It's not about what I don't want. It's about what I do want. I want it to be God's way. I want things done the way God set them up. If you remember this morning, we talked about when Solomon built the temple. He did it according to the instruction given to him by God. We have to do it according to the instruction given to us by God. Amen. Amen. And the world don't want that. And the world don't like that. But it's got to be God's way. It's got to be God's way. I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to try to close it. Right now, the world and most of the church world don't want nothing to do with true born-again Bible-believing, fundamental Bible-believing, taking that every letter, every word, exactly what it says, don't want nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you something. There's coming a day when they're going to turn to these fly-by-night churches and these so-called churches and these prosperity guys, and they're not going to be able to help them. And there's going to be a little light on the hill. And that's when they're going to need us. That's when they'll have to come to only one place for the answer. Those who have the truth, those who know the truth, those who can give them the answer. A lot of these people out there fall into all this hogwash and, and baloney that's being pushed around and when they have a hard time and when they have a trouble and they send the five bucks and the formula don't work, they're like still a wreck. They quit on God. It ought not to be that way. We got to give them the truth. They need to see that there is a real way. There is another way. There is something that does work. This is where we need to go. This is what we need to be. This is what has to happen in the church. Because if they don't, I, I really believe in the United States of America, the true church is drawing her last breath unless something happens. Because honestly, those who are truly sold out to God are dying off. This generation that's coming up now have been deceived. That's right. They've fallen for all that stuff. And nobody's telling them any different. Because it's none of our business. We can't interfere. We can't do this. We can't do that. Yeah, we can. We've been given the authority. We've been given that job. That's why we're here. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Whether they like it or whether they don't. That's it. I'll stop.